how you can double your hits, hurries, and sacks on the quarterback. And joining me to discuss that is the author of the Pass Rush Bible, Craig Roke. Craig, it's great to have you here on the podcast. Yeah, great to be here. So, Craig, uh, you and I talked, I don't know, uh, a month and a half ago and met for the first time. And you had you know, been putting some stuff out here uh, after a, a playing career where you've been able to learn a lot of things. And I think you're doing an excellent job of, of teaching those. And we're definitely going to get into what you've put together for really for both for players and coaches. But I uh, wanted to talk just a little bit about your football journey and the things that have led you to this point. And, you know, for our listeners, I guess, if you could uh, – let us know exactly, uh, you know, what your journey was college through, you know, you had some time in the NFL, CFL, and uh, things that, I guess, led you up to this point right now where you're doing some things to help both players and coaches. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just a little bit about um, my journey is, you know, I, I, I'm from Scottsdale, Arizona originally. Then I went to University of Michigan um, and and ended up, you know, starting every game I played there and set the record for most consecutive starts in University of Michigan history. And then after that, I, I went with the Panthers uh, and, and was picked up as a free agent there with the Panthers and, and was with them a couple years. Uh, and then after that, went up to the CFL and, and played with the BC Lions and the, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And this last year, we ended up winning a, a Grey Cup, which was awesome. And so, you know, even uh, I've ran into so many great coaches along the way um, and ones that, you know, truly have like shaped me. And, you know, I've, I've just gotten like all this knowledge um, and then also practical playing experience. So not only am I am I getting the coaching, I'm I'm coaching others that are younger than me now and uh, also practicing and seeing what actually works in real life scenarios. And, and so that's a little bit of the, the impetus for uh, writing the, the pass rush Bible is, you know, really just putting out the, um, you know, these, these learnings that I've, I've gotten over, over the years and seeing what truly is effective in building great pass rushers. So uh, now I am from Ohio and, you know, we don't, necessarily uh, care for that team up north that much, you know, don't say their name, et cetera. But you, you were uh, a, a two-time All-Big Ten player for Michigan and uh, have the record for most consecutive starts. Talk to us a little bit, though, about, you know, playing in that particular program, that, you know, tradition, Rich, I know right now not necessarily having the year they want, but, you know, I, I don't know what you can chalk – 2020 up to in, in any way it's just been a crazy year um, but it's it's a program that's storied has a ton of history tradition etc and and um, talk to us a little bit about that experience yeah playing at University of Michigan is something that um, you know I'll, I'll always remember and always cherish there's just there's so much history as you were saying and a lot of expectation that that comes with it um, you know, when you're not winning, like we aren't right now, uh, there's a lot of pressure, right? And and I've been on teams where, you know, you know, Rich Rod was transitioning in and, you know, we weren't up to snuff of what the Michigan standards are. And so when you do have that standard of excellence and um, and you're not hitting it, there's a lot of pressure. But when you are hitting it, man, it's, it's you got the crowd behind you, you got um, you know, it, it's really fun. And, you know, you have, you know, 120,000 people, um, you know, that were coming to games in, in you know, and that's something that, um, you know, I, I even look back now, I say, well, man, like 120,000 people in the stadium, like, that's so weird now to think about. But, um, you know, it's something that's like very special and like not many people experience that in their life, like playing in front of that sort of crowd and, and them cheering for you and, you know, that's just something that, um, you know, in terms of experiences, it's been a very special one. So moving forward in, in your experiences in, in the pros, um, you know, especially playing in, in Canada, I think Canada gets to be a little bit more pass heavy with just the rules and, and how that game works. Uh, you certainly started to develop a knack and understanding for rushing the passer it's, it, to the point where I think, you know, in, in looking at your stuff, and I know you sent along a chapter uh, to me, uh, calculating you know pass rush, 
path, which I thought was just brilliant. But you know, you you've un, you understand it, I think, in a a way maybe that other people haven't looked at it. How did all that develop for you? Yeah, well, I think the first thing is that I myself had to become a student of the game, and you know, I would say this to um, you know any coach and any player is that if you're not truly obsessed with the craft of improving um, as a defensive lineman or defensive line coach, um, you know, this really isn't the profession for you. Right. And um, so first, like becoming a a student of the game and, you know, over my career, I've ran into, you know, a a ton of different coaches. You know, I ran into, um, you know, Greg Madison, who was the D coordinator on, on the Ravens for a while, um, uh, our coach Jerry Montgomery, who is now D line coach for the Green Bay Packers, Eric Washington for the Panthers, you know, and these are all people who, um, you know, have imparted little bits and pieces of wisdom. And as I've, and I actually wrote a chapter of this, as I experimented with what does or doesn't work for me, I began realizing a kind of a system of a way to evaluate yourself and to, um, match your strengths and and minimize your weaknesses so that you can get after the passer more and make some big time plays in the backfield. So when we look at getting into and, and I really think you've you have developed a, a system for this, right? That it's not just a a list of random drills that it's it's pretty well thought out, especially as we talked about you know, the, the pass rush um, path and getting to, uh, I think you have it as get to X, right? Um, we could talk about that in a minute, but you've thought about how all of that works together. And it's not a cookie cutter approach. You need to study the opponent a little bit. You need to understand exactly what you're facing, what they like to do, what this particular quarterback likes to do. But I think, you know, in looking at what you've done, definitely, you know, I, I know I spend my time on the offensive side of the ball, but it opened my eyes up to, wow, if somebody really did this week in and week out against this, it would make it significantly tougher. How how did you go about, I guess, systematizing all of these things? Because I go through your, your pass rush Bible, you know, you got all these drills and, you know, you have some strategies as you get into your, you know, strategy edition, et cetera. Talk to me about how all this came together for you into what I would call a system. Yeah, well, I I think the number one thing was looking at all the coaching that I've been given, all all my own experiences, and and looking at it and formulating it in a step-by-step system um, where someone who, uh, someone who, you know, is starting from zero or a coach whose D line is starting from zero can then progress their D line step by step up the ladder. And, you know, I looked at my own experiences. I looked at what I've been taught and, and looked in, even at some other materials as well. Like I have this great um, D line manual from the Panthers and I have, you know, various D line manuals from other teams and, and coaches and just seeing kind of how they formulate it. And what made most sense to me was how do people best learn? And I think people best learn when you can say, hey, step one, this is what you need to do. Step two, this is what you need to do. Step three, this is what you need to do. And so I worked from the smallest part of what really an individual D lineman needs to work on first to upgrade their own pass rush ability and then look at it further down the line on how does a D line now rush together to be able to get after the quarterback? And so I go through first, like, you know, really steps one through five or one through six are, are looking at how do you upgrade an individual player? And this is actually something that I think in coaching is um, really not looked at. You can tell and I'll actually make a comparison here between Ohio state and Michigan I believe Ohio State, what they do, not only do they get top recruits, and Michigan gets top recruits as well, but not only does Ohio State get top recruits, they develop their players, and they know how to develop their players so that they come in being, uh, let's let's take like kind of a Madden way of looking at it. They're like an overall 60 coming in the freshman year, and they upgrade to an 80. 
the difference there is that you're able to upgrade your players and make them better individual players and teach them technique versus just relying on scheme. I think the difference here is that you have uh, what, what you're going to have always in, the, in football is a one-on-one -on -one matchup. You can scheme and scheme and scheme, but at, at the end of the day, one guy needs to defeat the other guy. And it's almost always going to be one-on-one -on -one matchups. So if you can up-level your D-line on an individual basis and know exactly step-by-step -step how to do that, I think that's a skill that is greatly lacking among the football world right now. And even my, my own alma mater, where I think that, you know, the guys need to be upgraded more, need to be taught more. And so in, in looking at how, how did I structure the book, really steps one through six are about upgrading your guys from an individual basis and teaching them how to operate as if they're a pro football player. Step seven and eight then looks at ways to correct common mistakes and then how your D-line actually rushes as a unit. And, and I think, you know, this is really, this is the most comprehensive approach I've seen to building an individual and then building your D-line from a pass rush perspective that I've seen. No question it is, and, and we will share uh, the link to this with what you've put on CoachTube, and uh, a chapter of this is available for free. I, I think if you are uh, a defensive coach, you're making a big mistake if you go, don't go take a look at this. And if you are an offensive coach, uh, you better take a look at what some teams might be trying to do to you if they pick this up. But uh, a, a ton that goes into this, again, step-by-step -step approach. Um, I think you know one of the, the biggest things I've liked – was calculating the rush path. Uh, I think it's something that you know you look at any part of football, right? There's the art and the science of it. This definitely falls kind of into that science part, right? It's it's something that you mm -hmm. believe is mathematical. So uh, talk to us about you know that part of it. Like set us up. What is uh, what goes into calculating the rush path? How do we get started on that? Yeah, yeah. So I need to talk about a few base concepts first about, you know, to, to even kind of frame what calculating your rush path actually means. And so when you're rushing, the goal is to get to the quarterback. The issue, though, is that you have this big fat guy in front of you uh, who you have to get around. So in a perfect world, you would love a straight line to the, to you and the quarterback, but you can't do a straight line because you have an offensive lineman in front of you who's usually bigger and stronger than you, usually. Um, because of that now, you have to think about what are the angles that you need to actually get to the quarterback and what moves, what's your rush path that you now need to take to get to the quarterback uh, to be able to actually get to him and, and to get around the offensive lineman. And so the first step that, that you want to take here is identifying what is the QB set point. And a definition of the QB set point is where does the QB set up to pass? And so you look, you're looking at a third and four to six. You say, oh, I'm watching film and I've watched, you know, four or five clips. It looks like 80% of the time he's setting up at five yards. Okay, great. So you now determine, you've looked at the clips and you've said, hey, this is his most, I, and I have a really technical term for it, the most probable set point um, would then be at five yards then because that's, that's the set point that he's going to take in that down and distance. Now in a different down and distance, say three and seven to third and seven to 10, he may now, his most probable set point may be uh, seven yards or even nine yards because you're looking at deeper route concepts now and the quarterback needs a little bit more time for those to develop. So once you have your most probable set point, and let's take this five-yard set point as an example, you would then choose your track. And so there's two tracks to choose from here. You have a tilt track where 
as a, a D tackle or an end, like a three and fives would, will usually use this track, where they're tilting their stance in and almost pointing at the quarterback. Um, that's one track. The, the second track is the speed track. And it's really, it's an upfield, you're a 90 degree angle from the line of scrimmage and you're rushing upfield um, like you're, you're a sprinter racing uh, a hundred meter dash. And so here, and, and, and so this is the next step here. If say you have this five yard set point, would you then, and let me ask you this question and see if uh, you're paying attention here. Uh, would you take a speed track where you're re- rushing straight up field and then try to turn the corner if the QB has a five yard set point? No, I'm going to have the ball out. Yeah, exactly. And, and the problem with using like a speed track for a very shallow set point, a five yard set point is, you're rushing up field, you now have to create a, an extremely um, aggressive angle to actually get to that quarterback. Now, you're rushing straight up field. The offensive lineman's pushing on you. He's most likely, if you take a speed track, unless you're an absolute speed demon, maybe a Von Miller could use this track. Um, the the offensive lineman is most is most likely going to push you upfield, and then you'll be too far above the quarterback to affect him. So rather than taking the speed track in this example, you would want to take you would want to tilt your stance in, so that you can then contact the offensive lineman at you know two to three yards, and then have a two to two a uh, one to two yard. Um, buffer area where you can now turn the corner and actually hit the the quarterback at the five yard set point. Um, Now there are some exceptions here to like this tilt and speed track. When you're looking at like an interior rusher, like a, a, say a, a one or zero technique, the QB is is just is almost in front of them right especially if you're a zero you're literally face to face with the quarterback and so at that point you don't want to tilt because you're gonna your line is now going to be away from the quarterback you would want to only tilt to be able to point your arrow at that quarterback so that you can get to the quarterback and if you're in the in the interior most of the time you're going to use a speed track because the quarterback's already in front of you um, and so now we get to practicing your rush path. And this is something that I did at the Panthers that was, we took a lot of pride in. So what we would do is we would research what's our most probable set point in a third and long situation. We're talking third and seven to 10. Yeah. And if, and if, I, could, say if for, I could pause you for one second there, I just wanted to emphasize something I thought was really good as you talked about it. You're getting into it more right now with an example is this idea of breaking down um, your, your passing situations, right? The third downs, and I'll go through and, and list really what you look at, that third and one to three, third and four to six, third and seven to 10, third and 10 to 15, and third to 15 plus. You know, I think that's yeah. something as a defensive staff, you know, really calculating this, what is that quarterback set point on each of these becomes such an important tool in your game plan and how you're going to rush the passer, right? E- exactly like you've talked about, because that's going to exactly. marry up to exactly what they're doing with their scheme. Uh, you're going to be able to know something a little bit about your personnel and what they can do. Can they get that to that? You know, by the typical time that passer is getting the ball, et cetera, that it allows you to make some decisions in exactly how you're going to rush that guy. So if you know, as an example, that, you know, uh, their set point again is maybe five yards. Um, You know, running a twist stunt there may not be the best thing. You may not have the time coming from a longer distance to get home. You know, maybe you have to do some things to, to, you know, open up a gap really quick for a linebacker, whatever it might be. Again, uh, I would really spend some time and I'd assign it to, you know, my defensive line guy to take a look at this and make that an important part of our game planning process. I know on the opposite side of the ball, you know, we'd, we'd have a protection meeting every week with our offensive line coach and myself. And a lot of times we'd bring our quarterback 
into that protection meeting so he could understand, you know, exactly what we were starting to see and how he was going to be rushed. And the other thing it brought to mind, Craig, was um, I had Chris Kappas on this podcast. He was at Mount Union, was a football scoop coordinator of the year, won national championships over there. He's at Austin P now as their defensive coordinator. But I can remember early on when we first did this podcast, he was one of our early guests. And he talked about creating big plays on defense and studying some of that. And for him, uh, he was looking for those situations where that quarterback set point was going to be on some kind of a, a play action after he's made a fake and having to you know, get that ball reset that he was looking for opportunities there. So I think with what you've done and just looking at the segments to calculate a, path, a rush path, can be a big part of anybody's defensive game plan. So I'm sorry I interrupted you there because I know you're going to kind of get into one of the details of that, but I, I just wanted to make that point. And again, we're talking about more of the science of this and how you break it down. Yeah, and, and that's 100% true. And the way I look at I work in the off season as like a, with a tech company and I'm a, a product manager with them. And we often look at data, right? And it's really the same thing in the football world is that the way that you get actionable insights from data is that you segment it. And so when you look at, you know, third and four to six, third and seven to 10, you're able to segment the data and say, oh, the QB set point is seven yards in in this segment, but five yards in this segment. Okay, we now can make a game plan around that. Your individual D linemen can make a game plan plan around that on what tracks they're taking. And then you can say, what are even the pressures that we want to bring in certain situations as well? Um, And so I I think that's an absolutely great point and something that, you know, every coach and player should be concentrating on. Cool. So so that gets us back to uh, your example here. I think we were at third and seven. maybe. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. So, well, and this is, this is, um, really looking at the next step here um, in a way to actually translate this rush path concept and calculating your, your rush path into practice so that your players can actually practice it. Um, So what we would do, and this is an example from the Panthers, what we would do is uh, we all would say, Hey, in a third and seven to 10, a third and long situation, where where does the quarterback set up at? And we would say, okay, seven yards, great. What we would do then is we would go to our one on ones, and we had this. It would be a it's like a rubber white circle with an X in the middle of it, and we would say, hey. And this was a big uh, thing that we talked about in the room was get to the X, G two X. We even made shirts with it. We were very prideful about it because uh, that was our job. Uh, in the, in a third and long situation was to get to the X. What we would do is in one-on-ones, we would put that X at the seven yard set point, which is where we, we studied and we said, Hey, this is where the quarterback's going to set up. So it doesn't make sense if we're winning and we're, we're winning at nine yards, we have to win and get to the seven yard set point. And so what we would do is we would drill this now in one-on-ones and say, Hey, here's a seven yard set point. You stomp your foot on that X uh, when you beat your guy one-on-one. Your whole objective is to get to that X. And so that's a great way to, to say to your players, hey, if it's a five-yard set point and you're using a speed track and rushing way up the field and you feel like you've beaten the guy, well, you actually haven't because you're five yards above the quarterback. Your job is to get to the quarterback, not to rush up field. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I like the visual too. I mean, anytime the, the t-shirts, I think is a brilliant idea, right? That's it's actually becoming part of of the culture of that position group, right? It's something you guys believe in, part of what you do, a big understanding because it's going to lead to success for you. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that's something where you know you look like if you, if you're tr- if you're trying to build a culture of excellence with your D line. I think having a saying like a G2X or something else that highlights the, you know, what exactly, what's kind of like one of the core principles of your D line. I, I think that's a great way to do it. And, and, and to keep reiterating it constantly. I mean, we talked about it just about every day. 
Yeah, it's it's uh, all those things that become part of the way you communicate about it, right? So as as you've walked through this, and it probably, again, is worthwhile for our coaches to go and look at this free chapter that you've put together on all this, there's a common language that you start to use, right? So whether they're using the terminology that you've set up here or it's something that you've had some of those things and you just maybe refine how you're communicating with your players, all these things, that communication is uh, such an important thing that, you know, it's, it's important for you to know that as the coach, hey, we know this guy is going to be setting here this week, primarily on this down and distance, et cetera, but making sure that your system for communicating that, the way you've set it up, your terminology and structure then translates to the players is really where you get the power out of it. That, um, you yeah. know, again, that T-shirt, that something, again, those reminders that just become part of these guys doing their job. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think this is something where I've, I've been a part of a lot of programs like this where they just say, hey, like, you just need to stay, like, just rush in the sea gap. That's your, that's your responsibility. There's a lot of places where you just say, hey, this is what you need to do. What this, I think, uncovers a little bit more, and I think what the pastor's Bible uncovers more, is how do you do that? How do you do that at an, at an elite level? You can put anyone on the D-line and say, hey, rush up field and you know, run around the guy, try to get there. But I think that's a little bit too simple of a way of looking at it. I think there's uh, a lot of layers to the position that if you start diving in and becoming a student of the game and teaching your athletes how to do this, I, I think that, that that's what separates, for, for my, from my point of view, the good teams from the great teams. Absolutely. And as I've mentioned, you've put all these resources together and they're available on CoachTube. Again, coaches, I'll share the links in our show notes, which you can find uh, a link in your uh, podcast app, whatever platform you use in the description for this podcast, or go to coachingcoordinator.com and check out the show notes for this episode. They will be there as well. Uh, Coach, you put together uh, the Pass Rush Bible kind of in, in three editions here. Uh, the Essentials, the Complete Edition, and the Strategy Edition. What I really like about this, too, in, in going through it is I think you've done such a great job in presenting very simple and straightforward coaching points and how you set up your different techniques and drills, and then you have some great um, practice film, game film along with that. So what can our, our listeners expect in, in taking a look at the resources that you've put together? Yeah, so really in looking at the bare essentials, um, that's where you, you get like the 201-page book in PDF format. And I have a tough time calling this a book because I, it's really a lot of mixed media. And so imagine this where you have, your, you have the PDF, you're going through it, but if you click a link on the, on the pictures in the book, the picture examples, you'll get rerouted to a, a live GIF where it'll replay the technique and point out certain um, um, coaching points of, of the concept. And I know this from experience that, you know, the best way to teach a, a physical skill, I personally think, is through video. Um, and when you, when you, and so you you have the conceptual view of it in the book, in the PDF, but then you also are able to look at the video and see, oh, like this is the physical skill in live action. I'm able, now able to click on it. So that's the bare essentials. That's the book, but really it's a, a mixed media, uh, workshop of sorts where you now you have video, you have the pictures, you have written word. It's a lot of different stuff for all different types of learners. When you look at the complete package, you have the book. And then on top of that, you have 29 pass rush drills uh, that are taken from top programs that, that you know, look at you know, how, do you, how do you improve get off, drills to improve get off, drills to improve turning the corner, flipping your hips, uh, and drills to improve violent hands, really those core fundamentals of defensive line defensive line play also there's a film study worksheet included as well where 
I put in a format what exactly you should be looking at when studying film. And, you know, I've made it vary so you can circle things and write in uh, uh, notes in certain places. And so it's a great resource for studying film. And then also six pass rush workouts that can either be used in the off season or during your indie period. I built them in a way where they can be done in, you know, about five to 10 minutes, with the, which is your typical indie period, but then also have longer ones that you could have your players doing in the off season. Um, and then the last, the last strategy package includes everything that's in the complete package and bare essentials. But then you also get a one hour video call with me to clear up any um, questions that you may still have. And, you know, I just want to make myself a resource um, that, that can be relied upon here. And so those are the three packages. Again, I, I think you've done an outstanding job in, in putting this together. I love the, the mixed media approach to this, how you've done it. Uh, I think just a great way for players and coaches to learn. So uh, thank you for putting that together. I think it's something that's useful for the game. Uh, what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you? Yeah, I mean, you can catch me on Twitter or Instagram at Craig Rowe. That's C-R-A-I-G-R-O-H. Um, yeah, and, and I'm on Twitter and Instagram, you know, posting defensive line tips just about every single day. Craig, I really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, as I dig into this, uh, I know there's other opportunities for you to come on here and, and talk some more pass rush and share some ideas. And I'm sure this is ever evolving for you as you continue to study the game. So I appreciate what you're doing. And, and certainly you're welcome back to talk some more ball. Awesome. Great. Thanks. Thank you again for listening to the Coaching Coordinator Podcast. Please, if you are enjoying the podcast, head over to iTunes or Spotify and click five star for a rate. If you have a minute, write a review. It really helps the podcast. Check out our new home for the Coaching Coordinator podcast. That's at coachandcoordinator.com. And follow me on Twitter at Coach K. Grabowski.